So now for our fourth and final step before we mix our dough, we're going to add our starches. And there are four components to my gluten-free dough, the leaven, the soaker, the gel, and the starches. So let's go grab them now and we can mix them all together. To be honest, this is the thing that I love, love, love about making gluten-free sourdough is you are relying completely on the fermentation process. There's no gluten to develop. So there's no stretching and folding. You're just, you know, that saying of set it and forget it. You basically just mix it and forget it. So not really, but you mix it and then you just have to keep an eye. So it's really quite easy. You just have to learn exactly how to tell when your dough is done bulk fermenting. Really, that's the biggest thing. And we're going to talk about that lots. So now I'm going to add my gel and I wanted to show you, look at how it's thickened up here. So that's what the psyllium husk does. And I like to use whole psyllium husk, but if all you have access to is psyllium husk powder, it's heavier. So you just need, cause it's ground up. So you'll need to use a little bit less. And then we're going to add in our leaven. And we're probably going to be putting in the whole thing, but just in case, cause I did add a little extra, I like to weigh it. So I'll put this on. Uh, here's our leaven that we've created and look at that. It has definitely almost doubled in size. And I think if we peek inside, yes, we can see that it is incredibly active. All the bubbles we can see. We can see it also has a little bit of that quilted appearance and I think it is ready to mix. So let's do it. And we need 300 grams of leaven. So give it a mix because it does separate a bit and all that the carbon dioxide was what was lifting everything up there. So we just give it a mix and we saw that there was some liquid separated at the bottom. All right, so now we'll pour most if not all of that in. Usually it ends up being the whole thing, but. Yep, and it is. And finally we add our starches. So for this formula, I put potato starch and tapioca starch, which is also known as tapioca flour. Potato starch and potato flour are not the same thing, however, so make sure it's potato starch. And if you cannot have potatoes, you can also use arrowroot starch in replacement of that. So now I take this to my mixer, but you do not have to use a mixer if you don't have one. You can also just mix it with your hands and, and a spoon, and you'll just need to mix them a little bit longer. So let's take it to the mixer. All right, well, this dough looks lovely and well mixed. So let's go take it over to the counter and take it out of its bowl. So now you can use a spatula or a dough scraper. I can't find my plastic one, so I can use my spatula and I'm going to take it out of the bowl. I'm going to show you how to do it with just a little soup bowl. And you just wanna make sure like I'm showing there that it has a small diameter and it has high sides because I find with the gluten-free dough, it expands where the space is during its bulk ferment. And that's kind of the shape it tends to take. So if you have a smaller bowl with higher sides, you'll get more rise out of your dough. And you can put a towel on top and you just wanna use a thin towel that doesn't have any lint. And then you put some brown rice flour on top of that so it doesn't stick. And in fact, you actually don't have to do this, but I like to. It, I find the dough doesn't stick very much. And here's the little sample I was talking about. Now this is actually Hendrick's idea from the bread coat. I told you I just love him. I forgot to film it, but what I did was I took a small piece of my dough and I just push it inside my small glass container. You want it to be fairly small and you're just going to put enough in so that you can see the dough rise. And you want the container to be small enough that's what I was showing with my hands there for it to be small enough that it's going to rise up like this one here. So if I place my elastic on there, then I'll be able to tell exactly when my dough is 
done fermenting. So I'm just going to give it a little shape. It's very different than gluten containing dough. I find it you don't really need to shape it. And I could have smoothed this a little bit more, but I didn't. This is going to be the underside. And there's no need to put flour on top. Just cover it up and you're going to put it in a plastic bag. And this will keep the moisture in it. And then we're just going to do our bulk ferment now. And remember, our rest and chill. The rest is absolutely necessary. The chill isn't. But we're going to allow it to bulk ferment for around two hours, like I'm going to do, especially if it's winter where you are and it's cold. So otherwise, you can keep it at around 21 degrees Celsius and it'll be perfectly fine. And I'm going to come back in the next video and show you exactly what to look for over that next two hours. Keep an eye on it for the first time that you're making it so you can see what it looks like at each stage. So I'll see you again in the next video when we will monitor our bulk ferment. Just mix it and forget it. Come back in an hour and check and see how your dough is looking. I'll see you then.